ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily the praise belongs to Allah, we praise Him, seek His assistance and forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds. Whoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead him astray and whoever Allah leads astray, there is no one that can guide him. I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and that He has no partners or associates. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. This evening, bi ta'ala, we are uh, in our fourth session dealing with the book Ta'zeem al-Salah. Ta'zeem al-Salah. That is, yani recognizing, acknowledging the greatness, the magnificence the lofty position of this act of worship, as salah that is being offered to Allah Al-Azim. Allah Al-Azim. Naam. Ta'zim As-Salah. Yani the act that is being offered to Allah, who is Al-Azim. Naam. And uh, our topic tonight is a very important topic. Mawqifan Azimaan. Mawqifan Azeeman. Very important topic that we hope the Eden Ilahi Ta'ala will be a reminder to myself first and to each of us of what we should be doing and what we are able to do in order to make to put us in a better position in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and most importantly in the next life. Before we enter the topic for tonight we like to review quickly what we discussed last week in lecture number three and the questions related to it as quickly as possible. The first question is memorize the hadith of salah being the amud, the pillar of the deen and explain it with an example. Naam. <laughs> Anybody in the back? Anybody in the back remembers the hadith that we mentioned last week? Dealing with, if somebody can hold that in case somebody comes in late, somebody just be responsible for it. We don't have to look for it in the end. You want me to sign it? Let him sign it. Okay, nobody in the back? Okay, we'll take from the front then. Now, there's somebody in the back. As salatu amud al-deen. As salatu amud al-deen. Now. Huh? Naam, but in the, 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 way, the wording, the meaning of the hadith was narrated by Imam Ahmed rahimahullah in his book dealing with salah. He narrated it by meaning in this word, in this way. As salatu amududdin. As far as the actual wording that came in the hadith, I think we mentioned it last week, but yani, if anybody made note of that, the actual wording of the hadith. Naam. Somebody? Naam. Abdullah. Huh, Ahmed too? <laughs> Naam. The hadith of Mu'adh bin Jabal. Naam. Naam. This is the actual wording as the hadith came yani originally and in the wording of the hadith of Mu'adh yani the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa shall I not inform you shall I not inform you about the, the matter of Allah's deen what, about the matter of Allah's deen the ra's what is the head of it and what is the yani pillar of it and what is the highest peak of it and in that hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said ra'suhu Al-Islam 
the head of the matter is al-Islam. Wa amuduhu as-salat. And its pillar is salat. And that's the wording that Imam Ahmed was narrating by meaning. As he mentioned it in the book, he said as-salat amudu al-deen. Yani amuduhu, amudu al-Islam, amudu al-amr. It is a salat Yani the pillar of this affair, of this matter of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that holds it up is the salat. And the example that Imam Ahmed rahimahullah mentioned concerning this, the example that, he, that to make clear what you mean by the amud al-deen and the importance of the salat, he gave an example. Naam. Naam. Ibrahim. He gave the example of the fustat. The fustat. Naam. Of the tent and the amud, the pillar of the tent. If it falls... The ropes and the pegs will not benefit all the way. Naam. Meaning the lower parts. And if it's standing? And if it's standing, the pegs and the ropes will benefit. Naam. And he said, this is the way salat is to Islam. Naam. Wa kadhar naam. So the meaning, the example that Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, gave is that, do you not know the example of a, yani fustat, yani a big tent? Yani the pillar in the center that holds it up, if that pillar falls, the whole tent is going to fall and you will not benefit from the ropes that are, ty- that are tying it down, the pegs or stakes that are, that are planted into the ground. None of that will benefit. The tent will fall down. But if the amud is standing, then and only then can you benefit from the other things, the ropes and pegs and everything else that will make it be of some benefit. And this is the same way that a salat is to Islam. If the salat falls, if it's absent... There's no Islam. As we will see, yani a little bit more clearly as we go along. After this, we said, mention the first and last thing that will be lost from the deen of Islam. What is the first thing that will be lost? Abdul Rashid. <laughs> No. That, that's a future question, but anyway, we'll take it now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. The first thing that will be lost from the deen, yani, as the deen begins to disappear from the earth, the first thing that will be lost is al amana. No. Trust. People, nobody will be trustworthy anymore. No. And the last thing will be the salat. Yani, when the salat is going khalas, there's nothing left of Islam. La khalaqa. La khalaqa means here, they will have no portion of the deen. Yani, as is narrated in the other hadith, la deen lahum, la iman lahum. They will not have any deen, they will not have any iman. They will be praying. People will be praying in the end. But those people in the end, their prayer will be of no benefit. These people have nothing left from Islam. Now, actually, the question, the original question was what? What is the first thing that will be lost? That is Al-Amana. And we know that that has already been gone. I mean, there's almost no trustworthy person left even amongst the Muslims. And the last thing is the Salat. Now, And the next question is mentioned three major sins which are considered less severe than the sin of abandonment of salat. Yani major sins that are less severe than abandonment of salat. Now, uh, Adam. Uh, sin, zina. zina. Uh, stealing. stealing. And, drinking and drinking alcohol. What else can we add to it? Ahmed. Okay, Killing people. Naam. And so many others. Akhth al-amwal. Taking people's property. These are major sins that are very serious. Killing someone, committing illegal sexual relations, taking people's property. Naam. But all of these things are less than abandonment of salat. Tark salat. And we say, why is that so? Because abandonment of salat is kufr. If a person abandons salat intentionally, willingly, knowingly, khalas, they go out of Islam. They're out of the circle of Islam. Out of the circle of Islam. They are not considered to be a Muslim. Number four, mention memo- and memorize two evidences from the Quran pointing to the severity of the sin of abandoning salat. Give me one ayah from the Quran. 
نعم او كما عند سعيد احمد سورة مدثر is what 74 74 اها نعم. This one ayat, mashallah, uh, not one ayat, one proof, <laughs> a lot of ayats, right? The meaning of this is what? In brief, yani, نعم. Every soul will be in pledge, yani, will be rahina, yani, will be held until it is accountable for what it, what, it, what you have done in this world. Every soul, except. Ashab al the people who will be in Jannah. And they will be in Jannah. Yani, yatasalun, asking on al mujrimin, about the mujrimin, the criminals, naam, the wrongdoers. What made you into the fire? What was the cause of you being in the fire? And the first thing that they said, lam naku min al musallin. The first thing that they said, the cause of being in the fire is what? It wasn't from the people who performed prayer. It's impossible for a person who doesn't make salah to enter Jannah. person who doesn't make Salah is the Kafir. As we know from previous evidences that we mentioned before. person who abandons Salah or who doesn't pray is a Kafir. That will never enter the Jannah. Kafir will never enter the Jannah. Only a believing soul will enter the Jannah as the Prophet ﷺ said in more than one hadith. Another evidence of proof of Naam. Uh, okay, we'll take one from Adam and one from the back. Naam. Surah Maryam. Chapter 19. Verse 11. Uh, Fifty-nine. Uh, Fifty-nine. 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 And they follow the desires, so they will enter the Raya, which Nabas said that was a. He said that it's a Nile or a river of uh, nastiness or from the fire. Yeah, from the hellfire. They will be in the hellfire. Why? Because these people who came after them, and all of us should be concerned about this. First and foremost, that we are not from them, and secondly, that those who come after us, our offspring, that our children don't be like them. That we have to be responsible for our children and our families to make sure that the people who come after us, that when we are gone, they won't abandon the Salat. Because this is what those people who came after the righteous people, they were those who abandoned Salat and they followed their desires. So they would be thrown into the fire, the punishment of hellfire. And one more evidence now. One more. Huh? Huh? About, yeah, about Salat. Tawbah. Now, what is the meaning of this ayat? Somebody else, tell me. What is the meaning of this ayat? He just read. He just recited. Now, and if they repented, this is the condition. If they repented, establish salat with this condition. If they did so, then they are your then they are your brothers in deen. Otherwise, they are not your brothers in deen. So this salat is a condition, a first condition, a fundamental condition. For a person to be considered a Muslim, to be your brother in deen. Now, and we'll stop because a lot of evidences, I mean the Shaykh mentioned, I don't know, a few more evidences but for the sake of time, inshallah. And there are many evidences, so many. After this, we said, mention or memorize two evidences from the sunnah pointing to the severity of the sin of abandoning salah. If somebody could give me a hadith that we didn't mention before, that we didn't mention the week before, that we mentioned from last week, not from the week before. Now, Ahmed. عن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه أيوة. من ترك صلاة مكتوبة متعمدا فقد طردت منه ذمة الله ذمة الله نعم meaning whoever abandons or leaves off one salat نعم 
One obligatory prayer. Salatan maktubatan. One obligatory prayer. One. Not all day, all night, the whole year. One. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Willingly. Muta'amidan. Yani intentionally. Not by accident. Not do forget. Intentionally. Muta'amidan. Abandons the obligatory prayer. One prayer. Yeah, the security of he will be, he will be free. Yani on his own, person will be on. They will not have the protection and security of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is for the believer. They will lose that by abandoning one obligatory prayer. And another another hadith, another hadith that we didn't mention from two weeks ago. That we mentioned last week. Okay, give me a had one any any of the hadith. Now. Now, meaning? Uh, between a man, shirk, uh, polytheism, kufr, disbelief, is uh, leaving the salat. Abandoning the salat. This is what separates a man from shirk and kufr. Meaning, when the person abandons salat, there's nothing to separate them from shirk and kufr. And other hadith? Now, Abdullah. Naam. The second part of the hadith, he said, what? This is the proof that we're looking for? Whoever doesn't guard and protect and only stick to the prayer? Naam. If a person doesn't guard the prayer carefully, and he be on top of it, the performance of the salat, then there will not be for him on Yawm al will not be there will not be for him a light, nor a proof, nor a means of salvation, najat. On Yawm al he will be raised up with who? The leaders of Kufr. The leaders of Kufr. Qarun and Fir'aun and Haman and Ubay ibn Khalaf. Naam. Naam. And from the meanings of it is that some of the things, those people who are mentioned, each one of them, there was some discussion about which they, what they were occupied with. That person was occupied with his wealth, person was occupied with his kingdom, with his leadership, and so on. His business and trade. These are the things that occupy people, generally speaking. But there are other things that occupy people, and whoever is occupied with those things, they will be raised up with those people. And what remains, quickly, um, question number six. Who was it that said whoever abandons Salat has no part of Islam and mentioned others who agreed with him? Naam, Ahmed, I mean uh, Salih. Hold it, hold it, yeah. Who, who's that back there? Who's that? I heard somebody speaking just now. That was you? Okay, give him, give him, he's older than you. Huh? Go ahead. Abu Huraira, huh? Okay, Abdul ibn Masood. Who else? Somebody help him. Who else? Muaz ibn Jabal. Abdurrahman ibn Auf. And the one who he mentioned the statement from is Umar ibn al-Khattab. What did he say? La hadha fil Islam liman taraka al-salat. La hadha fil Islam liman taraka al-salat. Or la islama liman taraka al-salat. Yani both of them are narrated from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. That the person who abandons Salat has no portion of Islam. Has no Islam. Who said this? Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And who said it also in agreement with him? The likes of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Abu Huraira and others like this. And many, and her, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and others besides them. The Shaykh, he just mentioned them. Now, remember who said this? The great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this is not what we said. List three categories of people mentioned by the author concerning negligence of salat. Quickly, one. The first of them, the worst of them. And the person who is never, ever, ever seen in the masjid for salat. Even though they live near the masjid. And they hear the adhan five times a day. And they go out of their house to go to work. But they don't go out of the house to go to the masjid to perform the prayer in jama'ah. That's the first one of them, who's never seen in the masjid. He doesn't know what the inside of the masjid looks like, nor does the inside of the masjid know what he looks like. 
And the second of them, or second of them, now. The one who is negligent in the performance of the salat. Now, in, in its what? Its conditions, shurut, its essential yani, pillars, the arkan, and the wajibat of salat. To, to other than that. But these, of course, are the most important. And he's negligent in those things. And the third of them, now, Adam. Huh? The one who's, who's, who's negligent and who takes easy, and who thinks lightly of the salat and jama'ah. Yani tahawun fi, meaning that he and he prays in Jama'ah sometimes, sometimes he doesn't. Yani he's seen in the masjid, but he's not regular. It's not that important to him. And these are the people that definitely we should be warned against resembling in any way whatsoever. And finally, mention the final warning in this chapter from the khutbah of Utbah ibn Ghazwan, radiyallahu anhu, reported by Imam Muslim. Reported by Imam Muslim. The end of what he said, the warning that he gave in this khutbah, nam. Not be arrogant and to not he said he sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he sought refuge in Allah. Yeah. By saying himself as being someone great with Allah he is severe. While he is not great in front of Allah. Now, Anybody memorize his statement? Huh? Who's that back there? Right. Now, Musa. Nam. So I seek refuge in Allah. And akuna fi nafsi. In my own self, I see myself as being azim. Wa inda Allahi. But in front of Allah, saghir. Nothing. Insignificant. This is really something important. Especially for the people who are trying to worship Allah and trying to learn the deen and are serious about it. Sometimes you might begin to imagine. You might look at your condition in comparison to other people. You might look at your deeds in comparison to other people. You might look at your knowledge in comparison to other people and begin to see yourself as being someone great. While in reality, in front of Allah, you are nothing. A person has to be careful from this. And who is this saying this? One of the great companions of the Prophet Wasallam. One of the first of, the, of seven people, first seven people who entered Islam, who saw the time when the Muslims were in difficulty and hardship and they didn't have anything. Even they didn't have food to eat except the leaves from trees. They didn't have clothes to wear except if they found a cloth, they would tear in half and share it amongst two of them. And then they, every one of them, including him, Became, they saw the time when Islam spread and was established in the earth. They became the leaders, the heads of cities, of big cities. Appointed by the Prophet Sallallahu to be leaders, or, his, or the, those who follow him, to be leaders. And yet he said, I seek refuge in Allah, that I see my own self as being someone great, while in reality with Allah, it's not like that. If these people, if they were afraid of such, what is our condition? No one of us, no matter what level you reached, in deeds, in action, in position, in influence, in knowledge, don't ever imagine yourself as being great. But actually, see yourself as being insignificant in front of Allah. Allah raise up whoever He wills. But don't imagine in your own mind that you are more than what you are. This is what we talked about last week. And today the topic, as I said, we want to talk about is Mawqifani Azimani. The fourth chapter, Mawqifani Azimani. Two places of standing. Two places of standing. Or two situations that are great, significant, important, tremendous. Two important, tremendous situations of standing. Yani, mawqifan. A mawqif is the place where a person stops or stands. From waqafa, to stop or to stand. A mawqif could be a situation or a circumstance or an opinion or a view that somebody has. Here we mean an actual place of standing. Two standings. One of them is in this world and the other one is in the next life. Mawqifani Azimani. And by the way, since this book, the title of the book is Ta'zim as Salat, it is incumbent upon us to understand the magnitude of this word, Azim. If you look it up in the dictionary, you will find so many meanings for this word. From amongst the dictionary definitions of the word, Azim is great, big, large, powerful, mighty. Strong, significant, important, grand, imposing, stately, magnificent, lofty, exalted, sublime, splendid, glorious, superb, huge, vast, enormous, tremendous, immense, stupendous. These are some of the meanings of the word azim. 
And what we are talking about here is recognizing the greatness, the magnitude, the magnificence of this salah. That is due to the one who is he. He is the one who is Al-Azim. He is Al-Azim. So what is this salah that we are offering to him? And what are these two standings, these two great, magnificent, significant, tremendous places of standing? The Shaykh, Allah yahfadhu, may Allah protect and preserve him, and his father, Shaykh Abdul Razak, Ibn Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, Al Abad Al Badr, Hafidahumullah, may Allah protect and preserve both of them. He says, Mawqifani Azimani, two tremendous, mighty, magnificent, sublime places or situations of standing. Yaqifuhuma al Abdu Baini Yadei Rabbihi. Yani two occasions that the Abd, the slave, the worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stand in front of his Rabb. Two situations. One of them is in this Hayat al Dunya. In this world. وَالْآخَرُ يَوْمَ يَلْقَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And the other one is when the person will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of standing. يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ On the day of standing. And based upon the correctness of الموقف الأول Based upon a person يعني, being in a good situation In a good condition In the first place of standing Based upon that Will be the salvation Or the success Of the slave servant Worshipper of Allah And his happiness or good fortune In الموقف الثاني يعني, A person's success and salvation And good fortune in the second place of standing, the second one, on Yawm al it will be dependent upon and based upon the condition of their standing in the first situation, the standing before Allah, every day, five times a day when you stand before your Rabb. How you do in that standing will determine what will be your condition in the next standing. Is, is there anything more important than this after the Shahadatain? Yani that a Muslim is conscious of the importance of this standing that we are being given as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day to stand in communion with your Rabb. But depending on how seriously you take it and how well you perform it, that would determine what would be your standing on Yawm al This is how serious it is. And some people take it so lightly. If they came to the masjid, they just want to pray and get it over with and get out of there. Or if they pray alone and nobody's watching, they might barely even pray. They might go through the motions to get it over with. Will that benefit you much on Yawm al Will that really ease your standing on Yawm al if you perform the prayer with that kind of posture, with that kind of attitude? Allahu Musta'an. And based yani, upon the defectiveness of the condition of the worshipper in this first standing based upon that this will determine yani, how his affair will be wasted or lost and he will be in a condition of loss in the second standing meaning the person who wastes away this opportunity in standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world this will be the cause of his affair his matter his situation being lost in the second standing the shaykh says الموقف الأول the first standing هو هذه الصلاة التي كتبها الله جل وعلا على عباده وافترضها عليهم خمسة مرات في اليوم والليلة يعني the first standing is this صلاة which Allah has prescribed for his worshippers and he has made it obligatory upon them five times a day five times in the day and the night the first standing is this salat which Allah has prescribed for us. He has ordained for us. And He has made it obligatory upon us. Five times in the day and the night. فَمَنْ حَافَظَ عَلَى هَذِهِ الصَّلَاةِ وَاحْتَمَّ لَهَا وَاعْتَنَى بِهَا وَأَدَّاهَا فِي أَوْقَاتِهَا وَحَافَظَ عَلَى شُرُوطِهَا وَأَرْكَانِهَا وَوَاجِبَاتِهَا حَانَ عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْقِفِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَأَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ يعني Whoever guards, protects and preserves this salat, wahtamma laha, yani gives it importance, considers it to be important. Wa'atanna, wa'atanna, 
wa'atana biha and gives care to it gives care, shows care and concern about it and performs it in its proper times not at your convenience, when you get ready to, when you feel like it but in its proper times whoever does so and as well guards and protects and preserves the shurut of the salat yani its preconditions and the arkan of the salat its essential pillars and the wajibat of the salat yani its obligatory acts in, for that person hana alayhi al mawqif yawm al qiyama then that person will find the standing on yawm al qiyama to be easy yani it will be easy it will be lightened for him and likewise <coughs> this person will find salvation and success on yawm al qiyama yani the person who guards and protects and preserves the prayer considers it important gives care in the performance of it performing it in his time and guarding and protecting and preserving its shurut and its arkan and its wajibat and the shaykh he didn't mention his sunan even though they are, they are also important but the shurut of the salat means the preconditions for the salat if they are not fulfilled you don't have any salat the preconditions like what do we mean by preconditions we mean that the person has to be in a state of tahara yani they have to have made wudu or ghusl depending on if they have major or minor impurity they have to remove yani izalat al najas najasa they have to remove any impurities from their body or their clothing or the place of prayer likewise they have to cover themselves sitr al aura they have to cover a person has to be covered this is a precondition for salat that they have to cover their aura in addition to that what they have to make sure that the time for the salat is entered and that they are facing the qibla and that they have niya proper niya these are preconditions if a person is missing any of those the salat is invalid from the beginning these are preconditions for the validity of the salat so the shaykh said a person has to guard the shurut of the salat you have to make sure that you are in a state of tahara that you are free from anything unpure that the time for the salat is in and so on with the conditions that we know and those yani, other factors that may be considered in terms of what we study in the details of fiqh of salat these are preconditions of salat person has to guard the arkan of the salat the essential pillars of salat like what? like takbirat al-ihram like standing if a person is able like what? reciting al-fatiha bowing, prostrating and so on things like this that are essential pillars if a person miss any of them they have to make it up and that raka in which they missed it is invalid and if they finish the salat without doing so, the prayer becomes invalid. These are essential pillars, arkan of salat. And they also wajibat. That if a person missed it, not intentionally, but mistakenly or forgetfully, they can make two prostrations, right? And make up for that. These things are critical that a person guard, protect, and preserve them. And these are things that are studied in fiqh of salat. And this is not our topic, right? Our topic is not the fiqh of salat. But it's important to understand that these matters have to be given attention. Because the ruqan of salat, if a person leaves it out completely, the salat is invalid. And the shurut, the preconditions of the salat, if they are not fulfilled, the salat is invalid. And even the wajibat of salat, they can be fixed by making sajda sahu. But it has to be done though. Whoever protects and guards and gives care and attention and shows concern for these matters, they will find ease at the time of standing, on the day of standing. And they will find salvation and success. As far as the one, أما إذا استهانا بهذا الموقف فلم يعنى بهذه الصلاة ولم يحتم لها ولم يواظب ولم يواظب عليها ولم يحافظ على أركانها وشروطها وواجباتها عصر عليه موقف يوم القيامة. As far as the one who takes lightly, who thinks little. Of this important standing in salat in this dunya every day, and who doesn't, yani, doesn't give care to the salat, and who doesn't think it as important, and who is not constant and continuous in performing the salat properly and in its time, and who doesn't guard its, yani, arkan, essential pillars and shurut, preconditions and wajibat, obligatory duties, that person will find difficulty. Understanding of the day of standing. Yani the mawqif on yawm qiyamah. It has been narrated by at tirmidhi Rahimahullah. 
and and Nasa'i rahimahullah and others besides them the hadith of Huraith ibn Qabisa rahimahullah may Allah have mercy upon him he said I came to al Madina and I asked Allah you in need of something who should we ask first and last and all in between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I asked Allah jalla wa ala to provide me with a jalis salih a righteous companion to sit with so I sat it happened by Allah's decree that I sat beside Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said to him Ya Abu Huraira inni sa'altu Allah an yarzuqani jalisan salihan fa'allimni hadithan sami'tahu min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la'alla allaha an yanfa'ni bihi he said I said to him oh Abu Huraira I have asked Allah to provide me to bless me with a righteous companion to sit with so teach me a hadith that you have heard from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perhaps I will be benefited by it how will he be benefited by it just by learning it by just by memorizing it huh acting on it. by acting on it that's the key if a person learns it understands it memorizes it they have a chance to act upon it but the person who doesn't know can't do it if you don't know you can't act you cannot worship Allah without knowledge that's impossible that's why it's incumbent upon you to seek knowledge this has to be a primary matter of importance learning your deen because you can't worship Allah correctly without knowledge but after you get the knowledge it doesn't stop there then you have to act upon it sometimes we get lost on the road of seeking knowledge we seek, we collect, we gather but we don't act upon it he said Teach me a hadith that you heard from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit me by it. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said to him, Samaitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul, inna awwala ma yuhasabu bihi al abdu yawm al qiyama min amalihi salatuhu. Yani indeed the first thing that the abd, the slave, servant, the worshipper of Allah will be called to account for on the day of standing from his deeds will be his salat. The first thing that he will be called to account for will be his salat. فَإِنْ صَلَحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ So if it, his salat is correct, is right, is whole, is good, then he will have attained salvation and success. أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ now, like we hear the Mu'adhin every day, five times a day, Hayya al salah Hayya al falah al falah The person who answers this call to the salah and gives it his due and performs it well with khushu'ah and niya salihah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, then this person indeed will attain al falah They will be successful. They will attain salvation. They will have a happy end. وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَصِرَ but if the salat is done poorly, is corrupted, is defective, then this person will be destroyed and they will be a loser. Naam, in this hadith the Shaykh says, وَهُوَ حَدِيثٌ صَحِيهِ And Shaykh Al-Bani, Rahimahullah mentioned in the Jami Al-Sahih, Jami, uh, Al-Sahih Al-Jamia, Naam. So the Shaykh he says now, <coughs> So reflect, may Allah God protect and preserve you reflect upon this matter that the correctness the salvation and success in the mawqif al-thani is based upon and dependent upon the correctness in the mawqif al-awwal yani the person's good condition in the standing before Allah yawm al-qiyam in the second standing is dependent upon their correctness and good performance and excellent performance of the salat and other things but especially first and foremost the salat in the mawqif al-awwal the first standing and a person's loss in the second standing will be due to their loss in the first standing because they didn't give care 
and attention and seriousness to the standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. Naam, whoever has lost this salat, yani whoever, whoever has wasted it and taken it lightly and fallen short in its performance and guarding and protecting and preserving it, Hakama ala nafsihi shah am aba bil khusran al mubin fil mawqif al thani yawm yalqa Allah jalla wa ala wa fi dhalik al mawqif yandamu wa la yanfa'u al nadam. Subhanallah. Naam, the person who wastes the salat and takes it lightly and falls short in, in its performance and guarding and protecting and preserving it, they have judged their own self. Hakam ala nafsihi. Nobody did injustice to you. Rather, you have judged your own self. Whether you like it or not. Sham Aba. Whether you like it or not. You have judged your own self. With Khusran al Khusran al Mubin. Clear loss in the second standing on the day when you meet Allah Jalla wa Ala. And in that standing, the second one, Yani, Yendamu. Yani, a person will regret. They will feel regret and remorse. وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُ النَّدَمْ But at that point, his regret will not benefit him at all. Yani indeed, a person will regret, but it will be of no benefit. It's too late now to regret. Now is the time to look at your situation. Every day Allah gives us a gift. A gift, a tremendous blessing, a ni'mah. To stand in front of him and to perform. To act. Not like acting in the movies, but actions for the sake of Allah. Not pretending, as some people do, they pretend to pray, make salat. They just go through the motions. We don't mean that. We mean Allah give you a chance to act upon that which you have learned, upon the sunnah, and to do it sincerely for the sake of Allah. Every single day you have a chance. That day there won't be any chance. There won't be any coming back. As Allah mentions in Surah to Sajdah, Surah to Sajdah na'am, that if you could only see the Mujrimun on that day when they stand in front of Allah, with their heads hanging and they will say we see now and we hear send us back give us a chance to go back and we will do righteous deeds now the matter has become certain it's too late then it's too late then a different ayah now because Allah knows I mean there won't be any coming back because Allah has already decided the matter but even if they went back they will act the same Al-Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, in his Muslim, he narrates from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu anhumah, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he mentioned the salat one day and he said, whoever guards and protects and preserves it, kanat lahu nuran wa burhanan wa najatan yawm qiyamah, then it will be that salat that he guard and protect and preserve, it will be for him a light and a proof on his behalf and a means of salvation on the day of standing and whoever doesn't guard it, it will not, he will not find a light nor a proof nor a salvation and he will be raised up on Yawm Qiyamah with the leaders of Kufr Qarun, Qarun and Fir'aun and Haman and Ubay ibn Khalaf all of them leaders of Kufr so whoever has wasted the Salat he has judged him, his own self whether he likes it or not to be raised up on Yawm Qiyamah side by side with the leaders of Kufr and the, the pillars of falsehood. This is what you have, yani, this is the place you have made, this is the bed you have laid for yourself. Lama radiya li nafsihi fi hadi hayat. Yani, when the person became, yani, since this person has become pleased for himself in this world, that he be occupied from the salat by, yani, desires and falsehood and pride and Yani misguidance and corruption and filth and immorality and following the imams of vice and depravity and filth and corruption and the call is to corruption. When a person became pleased with their self like this, then they will be raised up on Yom Qiyamah with those who are like them. Yani those who are like them. As Ibn Kathir yani mentions in the ayah in Surah Al-Safat, 37th surah 22nd ayat احشروا الذين ظلموا وازواجهم وما كانوا يعبدون يعني Allah يعني will command the angels to gather them those who did wrong the يعني the ظالمون الذين ظلموا يعني who did wrong mainly they committed shirk and kufr 
and with disobedience to Allah. وَأَزْوَاجُهُمْ Yani Ibn Kathir says that the meaning of this and from the scholars of Tafsir, from the likes of Ibn Abbas and Sa'id, Ibn Jubair and Ikrim and Mujahid and others, that it means those who would be like them, Ashbahuhum, wa amthaluhum, yani those who are like them, who are similar to them. Yani those who are those who committed zina will be raised up with the people of zina. And those who engaged in riba will be raised up with the people who engaged in riba. And those who drank alcohol will be raised up with the people who drank alcohol. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Gather them together for judgment. Those who did wrong, they and those who are like them, and that which they used to worship. Yani instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and guide them to the way that leads to the hellfire and what follows from the ayah. The shaykh says, <coughs> So everyone on Yawm Qiyamah will be raised up with those who are like him in this world. Those who are like him in the dunya, hayat dunya So if he was from the people who used to perform salat, and who used to guard the salat in the houses of Allah and the masajid, then he would be honored on Yawm Qiyamah that he would be gathered with the people who used to make the salat. And he will be gathered with the people who used to be obedient to Allah. And he will be gathered with the Nabiyeen and Siddiqeen and Shuhada and Salihin. And he will be gathered with the Prophets and the Righteous and the Martyrs. I mean the, the Prophets and the Siddiqeen, the Truthful. And who are truthful in their speech and in their action. And the Martyrs and the Righteous and what a wonderful company to be raised up with. So whoever refused for himself that... And yani whoever refused to be with the people of goodness and righteousness and purity and who became distracted from the salat by corruption and misguidance and amusement and falsehood, then he will be raised up on Yawm Qiyamah with those who are like him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is a bushra for some people, take it as a bushra, a good news. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, report of Al Bukhari, كل أمة يدخلون الجنة إلا من أبى. قالوا يا رسول الله ومن يأبى. قال من أطاعني دخل الجنة ومن أصاني فقد أبى. That everyone from my ummah يدخلون الجنة will enter the jannah. Isn't this a good news? Everyone from the ummah of Muhammad ﷺ is entitled to enter the Jannah except the one who refuses. Except the one who refuses. They said, Ya Rasulullah, I will refuse. Who will refuse to enter the Jannah? The Prophet ﷺ said, Man atani dakhal al Jannah. Wa man asani faqad aba. Whoever obeys me, he has entered the Jannah. And whoever disobeys me, he has refused Jannah. Yani whoever doesn't think this salah is important, they refuse to abide by what Allah has ab- obligated us with, then they have refused to enter Jannah. The matter is simple as that. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَعْلَمُ مَا لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَلْيَنْظُرُ مَا لِلَّهِ عِنْدَهُ مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَعْلَمُ مَا لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Whoever wants to know what will be for him with Allah, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, فَلْيَنْظُرُ مَا لِلَّهِ عِنْدَهُ Just look at what is with you for Allah. Yani you want to know what Allah is going to have for Yawm Al-Qiyamah? What are you giving to Allah right now? Five times a day in Salah. It's easy to know what's going to be your condition. Just look at what you are doing. Sincerely for the sake of Allah, this will be the determining factor. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply. Multiply. Good deeds that are done for His sake alone. The Shaykh says, reflect, may Allah guard and protect and preserve you. This standing on Yawm Qiyamah, reflect on this, that standing. For indeed you will be standing there. Naam, wallahi, you will be standing there. Mawqifun asibun, yani a very difficult standing. A terrifying standing. A standing, do you know how long it will be? What will be its measure? The Shaykh says, indeed, its measure مقدار إن مقداره خمسون ألف سنة يعني the length of time of that standing will be the equivalent of 50,000 years that the people will be standing 
one day its length will be the length of 50,000 years so what can we compare to this today from your days in this life and yani for the sake of argument let's say that you lived for 60 years or 70 or 80 or less than that or more than that what can you compare to those years or these yani years that are insignificant small amount of time what can we how can this compare to this mawqif al asib this difficult day of standing for one day that will be equal to the length of 50 thousand years what can we compare to this to these little years that we have in this world in comparison to that day whose length or whose time period is equal to 50,000 years the shaykh says then let's say for example that you lived for 60 years and you have spent one third of those 60 years sleeping because you are sleeping every day and night approximately 8 hours some people more or less approximately so the sleeping person is excused yani the pen is lifted from the person who is sleeping so whoever has lived for 60 years then they have slept for 20 years of their life that's off the record they're not getting any benefit in that time that's 20 years gone say another 15 years approximately from the beginning of the life of the person when they were not responsible meaning they were not held accountable they didn't reach the age of responsibility yet that leaves how much? 25 years what do you have to work with? to prepare for a day one day whose length will be equal to 50,000 years and the little 25 years that we have left that's for the person who lived 60 years everybody ain't gonna live 60 years some of us we already lived 60, 60 years so we know it's over <laughs> now nah, it's over then because the prophet some said the age of my ummah is between 60 and 70 years and most of it we wasted and people are still wasting thinking they have a lot of time but not everybody is guaranteed right. 60 or 70 years but the little bit of time you have left how much of it did you really devote to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there may be a little time left for us. Take advantage of it. Wallahi, we don't know. Do we have another year or another month or another day? Naam. So fear Allah. May Allah protect and preserve you in this salat. God, God, this standing in front of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Yani, attach importance to it, to this salat. And, and Allah will give yani, greatness he will, he will magnify your affair in front of him on Yawm Qiyamah He will raise up your status, status or your station in front of him on Yawm Qiyamah And be warned against wasting this Salat For indeed the one who wastes it is in clear loss It has been confirmed in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim Rahimahullah and the authority of Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said yawm al-qiyamati ala al-mu'minina ka qadri ma bayna al-dhuhri wal asri and this is also a bushra a good news for the believers if they take care to perform the salat well yawm al-qiyamati the day of standing ala al-mu'minina upon the believers ka qadri ma bayna al-dhuhri wal asri will be like the amount of time between Dhuhr and Asr for the believers, al Mu'minina. Yani that 50,000 years of hardship on the people, Allah will lighten it for the believers. The Shaykh says, in yani specifying how the Yawm Qiyamah, the 50,000 years, will be for the believers, and specifying it as it will be like the time between two prayers is a tambih, yani a notification or a notice. لِمَكَانِتِ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَثَرِهَا فِي التَّحَقِّقِ ذَلِكَ yani This is the Prophet ﷺ here is bringing to our attention is notifying us yani of the status of Salat and the effect of the Salat in realizing or achieving that achieving what? In achieving, achieving the takhfif, yani the lightening of that burden on Yawm Qiyamah that's going to be like the distance of 50,000 years for the believer 
if they have given attention to the salat, it will be like the time between Zohar and Asr. And even if we're talking about Zohar and Asr in the summertime, that's only a few hours, right? In the winter time, it's like two hours. Huh? Subhanallah. Maybe it will be like the between Zohar and Asr in the winter time. <laughs> Inshallah. Huh? This is a notification of the status of salat by the Prophet وسلم, using the measurement of that time me- by measuring by the salat. Showing the importance of the salat and the care that one has to take has to take for it in order to realize and to achieve this great blessing and favor and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Yawm Qiyamah. Allah <laughs> fanatakillah fi salatina. Shall we not observe taqwa of Allah in our salat? Shall we not observe taqwa of Allah in this great obligatory duty? التي كثر استحانة الناس بها واختفافهم بأمرها وتهاونهم في شأنها وإضاعتهم لها ولشروطها وأركانها وواجباتها يعني so let us observe taqwa of Allah in this tremendous great magnificent obligatory duty which so many of the people have given it يعني little significance have considered it to be insignificant they have taken it lightly, the affair of the salat. And they have been lax in the affair of the performance, the obligation of salat. And they have wasted and lost it. And its preconditions, and its uh, essential pillars, and its obligatory duties. They didn't give any care. They have taken it lightly. They have given little attention and little significance to it. And for that, these people will be in a sorry condition. Yani, their affair will be something painful and their reality will be a painful reality. The people who didn't give care to the salat. Wasting the salat deprives a person from every khair in the dunya and in the akhirah. Wasting the salat is that which deprives you, denies you every good in this world and the next. And it is a clear loss. So be warned that you do not deny for yourself or that you deny this matter <coughs> yani such that you only accept that you will live in disgrace. Yani the people who what? They don't accept, accept to be disgraced. How is it that they don't accept, accept to be disgraced? They fail to fulfill the duties that Allah has placed upon them. Yani they don't accept, accept to be humiliated and to be in loss. For indeed the one who, yani neglects the salat, has ruled and judged this for their own self. Yani that they be humiliated and disgraced and they are pleased for their self to have a life of disgrace and humiliation. Indeed, how can a person, which good does a person hope for? Yani, which excellent virtue can a person expect if they have wasted the salat? Which is the connection between the abd and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the connection. And the shaykh, he says, and we are yani, coming to the end of what he said, and this is, yani, remembering that in the introduction to the book, remember the Sheikh said that most of this book is based upon yani, khutb, yani, the speeches on Yawm Jummah that he gave in many places. And he ended this topic by saying, one of them said, blaming one of the people who used to give the khutbah. Yani, one of the people said to the, the khatib, blaming him, reproaching him. إِنَّكَ مُنذُ السَّنَوَاتِ عَدِيدًا تَخْتُبْ فِيْنَا فَمَاذَا قَدَّمْتَ يعني for so many years you have been speaking to us addressing us with the khutbah so what have you يعني what have you يعني قَدَّمْتَ what have you offered to us يعني saying you haven't given us anything and you given these khutbahs we didn't get anything out of it so the khatib said to him وَأَنْتُمْ تِوَالْ هَذِهِ الْمُدَّةِ تَسْتَمِعُونَ فَمَاذَا فَعَلْتُمْ 
Yani you blaming me, the one who gave the khutbah. He said, so you, all of these years that I've been giving the khutbah, you people have been listening. What have you done with it? Mada <laughs> fa'altum? Who is it to blame? If somebody has reminded you of something from the Quran or from the Sunnah, from the obligatory duties or the Sunan or whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, and they maybe didn't deliver in an excellent manner, so what? What they delivered, what did you do with it? Did they mention any ayah from the Qur'an? What did you do with it? Did they mention any hadith from the Prophet Wasallam? So what did you do with it? So who is to blame? Yani the person who knows is responsible to act upon what they know. If a Muslim hears an admonishment, a warning, an advice or a khutbah then it is incumbent upon them to protect and to preserve it, to deposit it in their heart. And then to turn to their Rabb, Jalla Sha'nuhu, and their Mawla, and ask him to grant you success to act upon it. Yani deposit it in your heart, and then supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give you the tawfiq to act upon it. And that he give you, yani, السداد, يعني that he make you يعني successful and correct in acting upon it and that he does not leave you to yourself even for the blinking of an eye otherwise how many are those of the people who have heard the admonishments the warnings, the reminders and from amongst them are those who continue to be in ghafla. In all that they have heard, they are still unmindful. They didn't wake up yet. Knowing that indeed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a day of meeting where He will meet His servants and there will be recompense and there will be accounting. So take advantage. Yani the servant, slave, the worshipper of Allah make, may, must take advantage of their presence in this life to reform, to rectify, to correct themselves, to purify their condition, to make good their actions, knowing that the tawfiq is in the hands of Allah alone without any partner. And the Shaykh, he closes with dua, O Allah, we ask you, bearing witness that you are Allah, and that there is nothing, that no one that deserves to be worshipped besides you. We ask you by your beautiful names, and your lofty characteristics, for your favor, and for your honor, and that you make us, all of us, to be of those who establish the Salat and also our offspring to be from those who establish the Salat, Ya Rabbil Alameen. <clears throat> After this, I just want to mention quickly three hadith from the Prophet Wasallam, and then we will close. Three hadith from the Prophet Wasallam that show us the importance of Salat, especially the Ruku and the Sujood. Especially the Ruku and the Sujood. How much care do we give to it? And again, I ask and remind myself first. When you examine yourself, do you feel that after being reminded of these tremendous ayat from the Quran and hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, from one week to the next, from last week to this week, from two weeks ago to this week, from three weeks ago to this week, do you find that you are doing better in the performance of your salah? That you are giving more care to it? That you feel a greater importance of it or you're in the same condition you were in before that's what you have to ask yourself because wallahi if you are doing better you're doing better for yourself and if you're not doing better it is against your own self the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in all of these hadith are sahih shaykh al-albani Rahimahullah mentions all of them in Silsila al-Hadith al-Sahiha. In one of those hadith, it is reported on the authority of Abdul bin Umar radiallahu anhumah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ 
إذا قام يصلي أتي بذنوبه كلها فوضعت على رأسه وعاتقيه in some of the narrations عاتقه فقل ما ركع أو سجد تساقطت عنه إن العبد that indeed certainly verily the worshiper of Allah إذا قام يصلي أتي بذنوبه كلها that if he stands up to perform prayer his sins all of them are brought forward فوضعت على رأسه وعاتقيه and they will be placed on his head and on his shoulders فقلما ركع وسجد so every time he bows in يعني ركو and prostrates in سجدة تساقطت عنه what falls off of him? sins if this is not an encouragement for a person to give care to their salat especially the ruku and sujood that indeed the worshipper whenever he stands up to pray or she stands up to pray the sins are brought forth يعني أتي بذنوبه كلها all of your sins will be وفر ووضع على رأسه وعاتقيه then it, the sins will be placed on his head and on his shoulders so every time he bows what will happen to those sins? they will fall off and every time he prostrates they will fall off so a person when they are in ruku they should be thinking subhanallah if I am making this ruku for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure my sins are falling off because the Prophet sallallahu said so how, how would that make your ruku if you remember that in your salat how would that make your sajda if you remember that in your salat yeah. that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as al-masduq he doesn't tell anything except the truth he is the one who is believed for sure your sins will be falling off you Shaykh al-Bani Shaykh al-Bani Allah mentions still salat hadith of sahihah number 1398 1398 the second hadith the second hadith the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith of Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu as-salatu thalathatu athlathun the salat is in three equal parts yani as-salatu thalathatu athlathun it has three essential parts at-tuhuru thuluthun the purification is one third of it wa ruku thuluthun and the bowing in ruku is one third of it wa sujudu thuluthun and the prostration is a third of it faman addaha bi haqqiha qubilat minhu wa qubila minhu sa'ir amalihi so whoever performs it with its rights fulfilling its rights the way it's supposed to be done yani most importantly performing it properly and with sincere intention and khushur that you're standing you're bowing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having purified yourself for this great standing فَمَنْ أَدَّاهَا بِحَقِّهَا قُبِلَتْ مِنْهُ then his salat will be accepted from him وَقُبِلَ مِنْهُ سَعْرَ عَمَلِهِ and all of his other deeds will also then be accepted from him based on what? based on the correct proper performance of salat especially ruku wa sujood wa man ruddat alayhi salatuhu rudda alayhi sa'iru amalihi and whoever's salat will be rejected because of poor performance the rest of his deeds will also be rejected naam the, the hadith <laughs> in english naam the salat is in three parts the purification is one third of it and the ruku bowing is one third of it and the sujood is one third of it so whoever performs it with its rights the way it's supposed to be done then it will be accepted from him his salat and likewise the rest of his deeds as a result of the correct performance of salat the rest of his deeds will also be accepted but whoever his salat is rejected then the rest of their deeds will also be rejected Shaykh al-Bani mentioned in Silsila Hadith al-Sahihah number 2537 2537 from Abu Hurair anhu. and the last hadith and we close with this Shaykh al-Bani mentioned in Silsila Hadith al-Sahihah 2535 2535 on the authority of Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna ar-rajula la yusalli sitina sana Yani indeed, 
a man, a person, a human being, man or woman. In the rajula, la yusalli sitina sana. That's a lifetime. He will perform the salat for sixty years. وَمَا تُقْبَلُ لَهُ salatun, And not one of those salat will be accepted from him. Naam, this is hadith sahih. Huh? Naam. وَلَعَلُّهُ يُتِمُّ الرُّكُوْ وَلَا يُتِمُّ السُّجُودِ Yani the reason for this is why? Because perhaps the person, he has perfected the ruku, but he didn't complete and perfect the prostration. Yani on seven bones, including the forehead and the nose. Some people are prostrate on their forehead, and wallahi, akhi, their nose is not touching the ground. The Prophet ﷺ said, I have been commanded to prostrate on seven bones. Perhaps he has completed and perfected the ruku, but he didn't complete and perfect the sujood. وَيُتِمُّ السُّجُودُ وَلَا يُتِمُّ الرُّقُوءُ Or he completes and perfects the prostration, but he doesn't complete and perfect the ruku. Wallahi, how many people? We don't know about the sisters, but we know about brothers all the time. Wallahi, all the time. People are pros- they are bowing with their back down here. That's more humility. That's not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your back has to be straight in ruku, and your neck has to be straight, and your head has to be straight. And your, 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 your hands should be spread, grasping your knees. Not together. Spread, grasping your knees. With your back straight. And your neck straight. And your head straight. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Such that if water were poured on your back, it would remain there. It wouldn't fall off. So perhaps this person, he has performed the ruku correctly, but he didn't. And he complete and perfect the sujood. Or perhaps he has completed and perfected the sujood. But he has not completed and perfected the bowing. And Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, and we close with this, لِلْعَبْدِ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ اللَّهِ مَوْقِفًا And that every worshiper will have two places of standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَوْقِفٌ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ One standing will be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salat. وَمَوْقِفٌ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ يَوْمَ ال لِقَائِهِ And one standing will be in front of him on the day when you will meet him. فَمَنْ قَامَ بِحَقِّ الْمَوْقِفَ الْأَوَّلِ هُوِّنَ عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْقِفَ الْآخِرِ That whoever stands or fulfills the right of the first standing, then the second, the last standing, يعني يوم كان will be made easy for him. وَمَنْ اسْتَهَانَ بِهَذَا الْمَوْقِفَ but whoever takes lightly this standing in the salat in this dunya, ولم يوفه حقه شدد عليه ذلك الموقف. Then the one who, yani takes lightly this standing in the salat in this world and doesn't fulfill its rights, then that standing on Yom Qiyamah will be made difficult for him. May Allah increase us all in concern for our prayers and giving special attention to the ruku and the sujood and what we are reciting in them knowing that we are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is standing that will determine how our standing will be in the next life subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk